okay, so we put the floor joists in and uh, I had some objects, uh, some items turned off and one of the objects that were turned off were the labels. And I don't, I don't need to label, I don't think it's necessary to label every single floor joist. So we'll go to VG for visibility graphics. It's, got, it's probably under the annotation category. And let's look for structural framing. Let's see what's there. Structural framing tags. Let's turn those off and see what happens. Yep, okay, so that went away. And we're also seeing the first floor, which I don't want to see anymore. That's an underlay. So let's take that and say none and see what happens. Okay, so that went away as well. And now it's time to just deal with some of the other issues here. One issue right here, how are we going to carry that? Now we can double and triple up the uh, two by 12s across here, which is one option. And then these will frame into the two by 12s, which will be supported on both sides. And that's, that's probably a good choice. So let's do that. Uh, we'll put in a beam. We want it to be a two by 12. And I'll bring it from here to there. We can't see it because I didn't pay attention to the uh, constraints of that. So now that means that I have to go back and uh, cut a section through there and see where did I actually put that. Two by 12 and you can see it's right here. So I need it to have the same uh, elevation as this guy, which is uh, minus three quarters. So if I click on this guy, and let's say minus three quarters for the uh, Z uh, coordinate. Let's see what happens. All right, what did I do wrong? Minus three quarters of an inch relative to the first floor. Okay, so now we have it in the right location. We'll go back. I wanna go to the structural framing and Let's, there are several options here. Uh, there, which would be minorly, would be slightly different. Let's align this end up with that. And let's align this end up with that. And then let's, the structural engineer would tell us actually how many we need here. Um, but I'm going to put in three and assume that for purposes of this class that that's satisfactory. So I wanna copy this guy from here to there. So now I have three floor joists uh, tripled. I have tripled them up here. And these guys will be nailed or they would use a joist hanger to uh, frame that into there. Now my steel beam doesn't go far enough. It has to go far enough to carry the end of that so now I've taken care of that point, which I said was an issue. And we still have to do the same thing over here, um, except that I don't have anything to carry uh, this end. If I triple these up, which I'm going to do, If I, let's align these because I want them to go, actually they don't have to go any farther than that. But anyway, we'll take it all the way over to there. So I'm going to say align, that's weird. align this guy and align this guy. And what do we have over here? Now this guy I want to come all the way across to here and to here. Now you can see that I have two objects uh, in the same space, which uh, so far I've never seen that in my life. Uh, you can't have two ob objects occupying the same space. So what I need to do is, is modify my uh, outline. So uh, sometimes we can select the uh, framing system. Oh, and there it is, I got it. 
So I was going to have to go to a section instead. So now I'm going to say edit the boundary. And I'm just going to take this magenta line and drag it over to there and say, okay, so I didn't change anything other than the length of those uh, few beams right there. So now that's good. That's being carried. At the end of here, I think uh, what I might do is just put a column that carries this, these three. Um, I can put a column right there. We'll carry that end. And this end is supported by the um, steel beam. And let's extend this guy too. What the heck? Why not? Okay, so these three are structural members now, and they're supported very well by the beam on this side. And then I'll put a column underneath there to carry that load. So do we see, let's look around and see if there's any other issues here. Well, this is a minor thing. Uh, let's see if I can select this. Oh, look at that. Uh, and I just want to move it over just a little bit. So I'm going to move that structural system from here to here, just so that they line up with each other. That's generally the, the way that it's done. So that looks good. What's the what's the distance right here? I just want to see what the distance is right here. Uh, 12 to 16. OK, so it's pretty close to 16 inches on center. Uh, if I unpin this guy and then copy from here to here, and I'm going to edit this boundary again because I see that it I remember saying I need to line that back up and I didn't do it. So this is minor stuff. Let's grab this guy right here, pull him back to there and say okay to that. That's a pretty minor detail. All right, so I'm kind of happy with this uh, so far. I'm not really seeing any problems. Uh, really happy with the, <clears throat> with the framing. It turned out to be pretty simple. We take a look at it in 3D. I really didn't change anything that would be visible here. This is where I tripled these guys up so that these guys will be nailed or uh, joist angled into this structure. And these guys will be joist angled or nailed into this structure. So they should be able to carry that load. So everything looks good. We're very fine tuning to that. My first floor structural plan now resembles what I said I was going to do, uh, my framing. And let's take a look at this section real quick. Uh, remember I said, well, it's well, maybe that's not the section that we want. Let's take a look at this section right here. A two by 12 can generally span about uh, 20 feet. That's a good rule of thumb. You would, wouldn't want to go any more than that or you're at 16 inches on center or your floor is going to start to be bouncy. Uh, we don't want that to happen. If you have a tile there, the grout might crack or the tiles themselves might crack. So uh, let's take a look at what the real distance is here because the this floor joist is supported at the edge here and the edge here. So that's really the span. So my span is 20 feet, one and a quarter inches. So it's greater than 20 feet. Depending on the species that I use, it might uh, it might be okay. It might not if I go back to the framing plan and let's see if we can get lucky another time and yep okay so i'm going to. Uh, change the spacing of that to uh, 12 inches on Center instead of 16 inches on Center. let's see what happens it just makes more uh, of these members in here now these are 12 inches on Center It's a really easy fix. And so, because it's more than 20 feet. Uh, I, I might want to make more of them in here so that they, they can, uh, I don't get that bouncy floor. Uh, it's probably overkill, but certainly worth it. You know, it's a maybe you know, five or six more floor joists at the most, probably. You know, and whatever the cost of the floor joists, it's certainly worth it so that the floor is solid. Uh, if this were your own house, you would definitely want to do it, and I would certainly do it for for all of my clients. Uh, I'd rather uh, that they spent an extra few dollars uh, on, the, on the framing. It's really relatively an insignificant additional cost. Um, when you compare that to the total cost of the house, 
and uh, it makes for a, a stiffer floor, which is always more comfortable. You don't want to walk on a bouncy floor, and you don't, you certainly don't want to have any kind of uh, uh, cracks. Uh, of course, we have oak here. No, we have carpeting here, so we wouldn't have any cracks in that anyway. But anyway, so I've done the fine tuning there. I'm very happy with my. with my framing system as it is right now. Now, of course, the next thing I would have to do is put in some columns in the basement because remember the loads are coming down from the walls and the floors and resting on these beams, but there's nothing supporting this end of the beam. And this end of the beam would be resting on the basement wall, but that's also a long span. So I would probably put a column here, maybe in the midpoint and maybe over there, but we'll save that for another tutorial. But uh, we're progressing along, putting in our structural framing. So now what's nice about Revit is if we look at a section, uh, we've, we're going to see all of the framing in that, in that section. If we go back and take a look at a section in this direction, uh, we're going to see the framing all the way across there. So I would ask you to think about how difficult this would be to do in AutoCAD. Or uh, imagine if you had to draw each one of those by hand, how, how much effort that would take. So Revit really is, in a lot of ways, really saving us a great deal of, um, of, of time. And it's increasing the uh, accuracy and uh, information in the drawing that is being placed. And if you were thinking that we're going to really build this product or project, um, we would want to have as much information as possible for our, our contractor and, and the tradespeople that are actually going to do the work. So uh, we're progressing very well along uh, uh, developing our model.